Why do pictures in email sometimes show as attachments and sometimes in the message? Hi everyone, I'm Leo Notenboom for AskLeo.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure and hit that subscribe button down below to ensure you get the videos that I release throughout the week. At the end of the video, if you found it useful, interesting, informative, hit that thumbs up button. Those two things, subscribing and thumbs up, not only tell me that I'm doing a good job, but they actually help other people who are out on YouTube searching for answers. Question. I often get pictures sent to me by some people. Sometimes when I open the mail, I see the pictures automatically. Other times, instead of a picture, all I see is something like pic123.jpg, and I have to click on each attachment separately to see them. This kind of thing comes and goes on its own. Can you please solve the mystery? It is indeed a bit of a mystery. As it turns out, it's a fairly complicated mystery. There are a number of choices that the sender makes that control where, when, and how images are displayed. And there are a couple of security settings on your end that also affect what happens. Let's have a look real quick. The first is a choice made by the sender. They choose whether or not to send their email as rich text, which actually includes all of the formatting and the inline pictures and all that kind of stuff, or plain text, which has no formatting whatsoever. Now you can still include pictures with your plain text email, but plain text email only supports attachments. There is no opportunity to place images actually in the body of the email. So that's the first choice. If they choose to do rich text email, then they have another choice. This time the choice is for each image. An image can be placed in the body of a message so that it appears surrounded by the text, or it can still be added as an attachment. So the sender can also say, we'll put this picture in the body or we'll send it as an attachment. So those are the things that are more or less under control of the sender of the email. Those are decisions that are out of your hand. Now the email program also plays a bit of a role in this, the email program that you're using. When images are in the body of a message, they can be part of that message in either of two different ways. They can be either, I'll call it a hidden attachment. In other words, the image actually came with the mail. It's part of the mail. It's kind of like an attachment that's right there on your computer already, except because it's rich text, the mail program you're using knows that rather than showing that as an attachment, it should put the image somewhere in the body of the message. Great, not a problem. The other scenario though, is if the image is a reference, it's a pointer to an image out on a website. So for example, the body of the message might be very, very small, very simple, very easy. And instead of actually carrying the image with it, it says, when this email is viewed, go get the image from over here. So that means that, well, for one thing, you have to be online for images to be displayed, but there's an interesting side effect. And that side effect is that, remember that I said, when the email is opened, go fetch this image. That tells whoever is on the receiving end, whoever's providing the image, that email was opened. It's how open tracking works. So one of the things that happens in email programs is that is disabled by default. Instead of automatically going to fetch the images, your email program will simply display a placeholder, like you probably saw, and somewhere, probably towards the top of the message, it'll say images are not displayed or images are not displayed by default. Again, depending on your email program, that may be the default. There may be a setting that says turn it on or turn it off for everyone, or you can say for this specific person, the specific email address, whenever they send me email, it's okay to automatically go fetch all the images because I trust them. Now, I will say as kind of an aside, some email programs or specifically some email services 
don't seem to respect that setting, at least not very well. For example, on one of the email messages that I'm subscribed to that I also send, in other words, it's an email that I publish regularly, so I subscribe to it so that I make sure that it's all working. I have said always display images from this email address hundreds of times and Gmail still fails to do it. I'm not sure what's up with that, but that is something else that further complicates all this because you can be telling your email program, I trust this person, I trust this email, and it still will display placeholders until you've said display the images. So that's what's going on. There's one final, final thing that kind of confuses things. It's not as common anymore now that Outlook Express doesn't exist, but some email programs, whether you're rich text or plain text, when they display the email, instead of showing you attachments as little icons down at the bottom of the email that you then need to click to open, if they're images, they simply display the image. So if you just scroll down in the message, you'll see the images and it kind of sort of looks like they're part of the message. They're not. There's a divider there that's actually telling you the message ends here and everything below this is an attachment. And I'm just showing you what the attachments look like for convenience. And it is convenient, but it can confuse exactly what it means for the attachment or for the image to be in the body or not. So I'll say that there are three rules of thumb here. You need to understand how your email program handles images as attachments and whether or not you should expect to see them below the body. It's not as common as it once was, like I said, but if your program works that way, okay, those are attachments. They're not really part of the body. That's how your email program works. You can add the addresses of the people that you know and trust to a trusted senders list or an always display images list or whatever. Presumably, your email program or service will then automatically always display the images that may be embedded in their messages. Great. Like I said, it doesn't seem to always work, even with a service as popular and as big as Gmail. And finally, make sure your security software isn't getting in the way. Sometimes security software has been known to fiddle with images in messages. If you download a message and look at it immediately, for example, occasionally some security software will prevent the image from being displayed. Again, this fortunately is also not as common as it once was, but it is something worth looking into. But that's the confusing mess that is images and email. Fortunately, it's actually pretty powerful, relatively simple, but it's also very confusing. I hope that was helpful. I hope you found that interesting. For the article on which this video is based, for related links, for any updates, and for comments, visit askleo.com 2861. I'm Leo Notenboom. This is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.